What's up, everybody? So on today's project, we're going to take this original construction flimsy old railing and we are going to turn it into this. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. So the first step in this project is to remove the existing railings. And to do this, I just removed the screws that attached the railing to the house. And then I needed to cut out the railing where it was actually embedded into the concrete, which with the sawzall equipped with the metal blade, it wasn't too bad. Repeat this process on both sides and perform touch up work as needed. And before actually installing the new railing, I resurfaced the concrete porch. And that was my previous video, which I'll link above if you want to check it out. So at this point, it's time to actually order your railing and I'm going with the black cool system from Uzada. And they actually reached out to me because they saw my back deck wire railing video, which I'll link there, which also used some of their products. So literally all I did was send them a picture of the porch. Here's like the actual picture I sent them with a couple dimensions. They designed everything, gave me this spreadsheet, which has all the materials listed and also has links to each of the products online. And they sent me everything to install which we're gonna do right now. So first things first, we need to establish and mark the railing post locations. And you wanna do this using either a chalk line or a laser level as shown. You want your post to be in a straight line. It's as simple as that. Next, preliminarily place your railing post on the concrete and mark the anchor bolt locations, which will typically be four per post with a Sharpie so you can see the location on the concrete. After marking the anchor bolt locations, you wanna take a carbide tipped masonry bit and pre-drill the holes for the anchor bolts. Set the depth of the drill bit so it goes slightly deeper than the total length of your anchor bolt and use a drill bit that is the same diameter as the anchor bolts that are going to be used to anchor the post to the concrete. Refer to the video description for more of a narrative on what size bits to use depending on the anchor bolts. And I almost forgot, make sure you get rid of any dust either with a blower or a vacuum before proceeding. Repeat the post marking and pre-drilling process for all the posts needed for your project. Luckily for me, I only needed six posts, but God help you if you have a project that involves like 42. Good luck. And if you're enjoying these slow-mo shots of dust, hit that uh, like button in a slow-mo fashion or regular speed. Repeat this process for all of the posts in your project, and then we're gonna install the anchor bolts to actually secure the posts. An anchor bolt works by tightening down and that increases the diameter at the bottom by causing the metal to flare out fitting snugly around the surrounding concrete. So take your posts, put them over the holes that you pre-drilled, and then take your concrete expansion anchors and insert them through the bottom of the post and into the pre-drilled holes. You should need to use a hammer to actually get these to fit snugly within the hole. And once you get all of them tapped into place, use a socket wrench to just give the post an initial tighten. Don't fully tighten at this point. Use a post level to make sure that your post is perfectly vertical and plumb. And if it's not, you might have to use some plastic shims underneath. Unfortunately, in my case, I had to use a few, but if you're dealing with a perfectly level slab, this hopefully won't be an issue. Okay, so we have the shims on both sides to give us a perfectly level post. You can see if we put it there, we're looking pretty level there. And also on this side, and once we have that, we'll go ahead and tighten these guys down. After confirming that the post is level, you're gonna now fully tighten your nuts and you wanna do this gradually. Don't tighten one all the way down and then go to the next, just kind of go uniformly. And then trim off any of the excess shim using a utility knife to score along the post and then snap off the excess. Repeat the railing post installation process for all of the rest of the posts needed for your project. Now, if any of your concrete expansion bolts are sticking up a little bit too high, you can use a reciprocating saw with a metal blade to trim all of those flush with the nut. I did this for all of the posts, unfortunately, and uh, I used a piece of cardboard to actually protect the post, and that's why. Clean off any of the metal shards and then install the decorative post base cap like you're seeing. Do this for all the posts. Next up, we're gonna install the railing, and to do this, I'm first gonna install this bracket that goes at the top of each post. Refer to the video description for the exact name of all of this hardware. I'll have it linked down below. Preliminarily tighten everything up, and then if you have a flat railing, you're gonna use the flat bracket, and if you have a curved circular railing, you're gonna use the circular. We have flat in this case, and we're gonna go ahead and preliminarily get it installed there with the provided hardware. Now it's finally time to install the railing and to do this, I put it in place preliminarily and I used some bar clamps to hold it in place while I got everything lined up and measured. So for my railing, I decided to make some rough cuts first. I marked at around 48 inches for the longer segment and I'm gonna go down to my miter saw equipped with a metal blade and cut that just so I have two more manageable segments. 
Then I'm gonna take the adapter clip that came with the railing to find my angle for the stairs right there. So as you can see, I have it clipped in place. It's meeting up, obviously not at the perfect angle. I'm checking the bottom bracket to make sure that it's perfectly flush. And then I'm gonna use my angle finder to find the angle between the flat section at the top and the angle section at the bottom. So I purchased this angle finder off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description. And using it, I found that the angle between the railing was around 141 degrees. And if you remembered anything from geometry, we know that right angles add up to 90 degrees. If we have 141 degrees, that means we have 51 degrees left over on that one right angle, which means we have 39 degrees to make up the remaining 90. But we have a miter cut, so we're going to take that 39 degrees and divide it by two to get the angle for each of our miters. So set your saw to the appropriate angle, and remember, you want to cut it vertically for this type of railing, and then make sure that your saw is equipped with a metal blade. I'm cutting that one segment right there, which is a longer segment, and then the smaller segment, both at the same angle. Depending on the quality of the saw blade you use, you might find some jagged edges on the railing. If so, clean that up with a file before proceeding. The last thing you want is a jagged edge on a railing not a good look. So after cleaning up the miters, I temporarily fastened the railing to the post using some bar clamps, and then I used that adapter to attach the two segments of railing together. Here's the moment of truth. How does the miter look? Not bad. I can live with that. Looks pretty good on that side, and then I did the other side as well. Both of them turned out pretty dang good. So here's how the railings look preliminarily placed on the post. Now we're going to go underneath and we're going to mark the actual bolt locations so that we can take it down and pre-drill the bolt holes. This drill bit came with the Muzada railing set and you're going to pre-drill the holes for each bracket that's going to attach your railing to the post below. You also want to pre-drill the holes so that you can bolt the adapter together on both sides of the angle. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and then use the provided hardware to actually fasten the railing to the post below. Repeat this for all the posts and then tighten everything up permanently. To install the railing end caps, I recommend you use some construction adhesive because they didn't really stay on their own. So now that we have the railing post installed as well as the railing, we can finally install the cable. Now, if anything that I say here is not clear, Muzada has a ton of literature on their website as well as many detailed installation videos. So follow along as best you can, but refer to their additional resources if you need it. So I pre-cut all of my cable, I measured the distance between the posts and added about one inch just to give myself a little cushion. And as you can see, this vinyl wrap cable doesn't fit within the hardware, so you're going to have to trim off the last bit of segment with a utility knife. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. After trimming off the jacketing, you'll be able to fit the cable within the hardware, and then you're going to want to install the three threaded fasteners, which are going to hold that cable in place within the hardware permanently. Be sure to tighten everything up snugly so it doesn't come out later down the line and repeat this process for all of the cable you're gonna need for your project. And this is where cable railings get annoying because there is a lot of hardware, but I think the look is well worth it. Next, take the adhesive backing and put it on each of the washer sleeves, and you'll see why in a minute, but essentially we're gonna thread two of these sleeves on to each of the cables, and these are gonna go and attach to the post later on. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So at this point, we're gonna push our inner terminal into the post there and give it a test to make sure that it's not going nowhere. Then cut the other side to length and trim off the jacketing as needed. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out what length you're gonna need so that you can tighten everything to your desired tension. On the opposite side of the inner terminal piece of hardware, you're gonna have something called a tensioner, and this is gonna have a threaded bolt that goes through the opposite end of the post, and you're gonna tighten that up using the socket wrench. This is a redundant process, so repeat this for all the cable in your project. After finishing up the flat section, we're going to move on to the stairs, and you're going to insert the inner terminal at the top of the stairway. Make sure that it's secure. Then you're going to trim off the vinyl coating and install the tensioner on the bottom. There you can see where we're going to have our threaded connection. And for the angle of the stairs, there's something called an angle washer, which is going to try to match the angle of the stairs and give you a more clean look. Thread the bolt into the tensioner and tighten everything up. Again, use the socket wrench and that's gonna basically catch on the tensioner so you can tighten up the cable without it twisting. Here I am showing how the socket wrench mates with the tensioner and then tighten everything up to your desired tension. It's also recommended that you tension the cable sequentially as shown and if you don't, your cable railing will for sure explode. Don't say I didn't warn you. So at this point, all you need to do is repeat this process for all of the cable involved in your project. It's pretty redundant. It's going to take you a few hours, but it's really not too bad. Lastly, if you remember those adhesive sleeves, now you're going to peel off the paper and you're going to stick it to the post, and that's going to cover up where the wire actually intersects with the post. It's more of an aesthetic thing than anything else. With that said, let's take a look at the final result. 
We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up our love friends, fill up the car to live best because we wanna. We wanna. Yeah, we just wanna have fun. The trunk's full of. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more DIY content like this. I'm gonna be doing a basement finishing series next, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. Check me out on, let's do this way. Check me out on Instagram. We got some stuff going on over there. I would appreciate it and I will see you on the next one.